My name is Axel Steuer. I came to the United States in February of 1952, and uh, we came from what was then West Germany. Uh, there are actually connected stories. Uh, the first was that uh, I lived in a children's home in Germany after the war, mostly orphans and other people displaced by World War II. And one of my great joys was playing in bombed out buildings, playing hide and go seek with other kids in the home. Uh, but perhaps my fondest memory uh, was being uh, taken in by a family in Holland uh, that uh, were charged with, I guess, fattening me up and before, before I started first grade. That was actually the most fun time I, I can remember. Not Germany, but Holland. I was born in a part of Germany which is now Poland. And so we had no other, we had no way to go home, let's say. Uh, we, uh, a family tried to go to Australia. They wouldn't take a woman with three children because they were afraid we would wind up on welfare. Uh, also, this was a time in 1952 uh, when the uh, American government, military government, was leaving uh, Germany and my mother was very clearly not going to get any jobs with the, with the German government. Uh, so when the Lutheran Church uh, had an opening in a children's home, an orphanage in Pennsylvania called Tressler Town, uh, we were sponsored by the Lutheran Church, lived in that home for a year and a half. And so we had reasons for, for going. and. Uh, and reasons for coming. Being an immigrant uh, in the United States was very difficult for, uh, for us. Uh, we came without any money uh, and uh, we had many of the same challenges that almost every immigrant family has, the first generation of immigrants. And so I think that uh, the, uh, we had adjusted to a new culture learn a new language, make new friends, uh, and make a, find, I guess, enough money so we could survive. And I think that's a very common experience for uh, immigrants, particularly refugees, and uh, I, I guess it has affected my values quite a bit and my commitment to do something to help others. I came to the States in 1952. Uh, well, we were in this children's home for a year and a half, and we, many of our needs were taken care of, our basic needs. Uh, and, but then we decided we needed to head someplace else, someplace where the children could get an education. And so we headed to California. We had enough money uh, to buy bus tickets for the four of us, uh, my mother and three children, uh, to go to Texas. And their family gave us a ride to California let us live in their home for six weeks while my mother got a job and, uh, uh, and a small apartment. And that's how we got started. It was, it was, it was a challenge, certainly. But uh, let me go back to that. I came to Minnesota perhaps a little late in the game in 1991. So bet uh, between that time, I lived in California. And in California, I began my higher education. Uh, and so between California and then Massachusetts for graduate education, uh, I came prepared uh, to handle a lot of things uh, in 1991, and Minnesotans were very uh, welcoming to me, partly because I was coming as a new college president. Kick it back to California when we were actually new immigrants, because I think there's a difference between being a new immigrant and then coming to Minnesota mm -hmm. already. I was uh, uh, 48 by the time I came to Minnesota in 1991. And things were quite different then. I mean, I had a lot of things going for me. Right. And so the early experience in California, I think people were just, every, everywhere I turned, from school teachers who paid for my lunches, uh, gave me money for haircuts, uh, people did all kinds of things for us. Uh, but again, there was a Salvation Army bringing us food, business groups uh, bringing us uh, uh, clothing. And I guess I got my first bicycle from a business group in the community. So in those early years were challenging, uh, but you know it's a. Uh, by the time I came to Minnesota, uh, what almost 30 years later, uh, I had what I can fairly say achieved something of the American dream. Yes, I think uh, probably the biggest challenges uh, I personally faced 
apart from you know uh, food and clothing and things of that sort, uh, where uh, a lot of kids uh, at that age, you know, elementary school, they thought Axel was a good name to make a lot of fun of, mm -hmm. and so that was maybe a little challenging. But uh, I have to say that I got in a lot of fights because I was teased a little bit. But I think lots of immigrants have those kinds of uh, adjustments and have those kinds of experiences. So I think. Uh, Again, there were so many people who were generous, churches and, and uh, uh, teachers and so on, that, uh, that the, the, for me at least, the difficulties uh, were surmountable. I was young at that time, and so I think kids can do a lot better in the challenging times. I think the first thing maybe just to remember that they are all descendants of immigrants or people who came to the United States or to, to Minnesota uh, with that background. I've talked to many, many people, hundreds of people, who talk with great pride about their ancestors, uh, the ones who were the immigrant generation. And, uh, you know, I think if they just, they just remember uh, that they had the same experiences, learning a new language and uh, adjusting to the culture and trying to make a living. Uh, that we're all in this together. We're all one Minnesota in that sense, too. And those are the challenges, particularly of the first generation of immigrants. I guess I might just add to that, if, if I could. Mm -hmm. I think they uh, should recognize uh, that the amazing experiences, uh, the different perspectives, uh, the, what immigrants bring to this country are very valuable for this country. And they have been for hundreds of years. And so I think we just remember that we are all, we all have that in our background, whether it's five years ago, one year ago, or 50 years ago, as in my case. To be a Minnesotan, um, I guess I'm convinced that if you, if you work hard, uh, are fortunate, have the good luck of finding friends and people who will support you uh, in that situation, uh, Minnesota uh, does per permit you to follow your dreams. And uh, the dreams may be realized not by the first generation, but by the second generation, the children of the original immigrants. Uh, there is no guarantee that the uh, first generation will not have a lot of challenges and struggles. That's sort of my sense of being a Minnesotan. Uh, I guess the main thing is that looking back now on the coming to the United States, uh, it's actually 60 years ago now, uh, I've had a lot, so many experiences, the generosity and kindness of strangers who've come and uh, been supportive, helped me to, to uh, realize my dream, paid for all my college education. Uh, I didn't pay for any of it because of good luck, good fortune, and I think the, the kindness of people. Uh, and so I think as I, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, uh, many of us as immigrants have had some of the same challenges. And we can go through the list of the many challenges that we have uh, from even learning Minnesotan, right? M learning Minnesota culture. Those are all part of, part of the challenges that we have. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, if we, uh, the secret really from my perspective is getting good education finding good schools is a challenge that I think almost every immigrant has. My mother left Pennsylvania, so we have better schooling in, in California. And I think uh, the secret of success really is education. And I would just encourage people uh, to, to, to look, at, look at education. And then I think that uh, personally for me, uh, I, I am committed now to helping other people uh, achieve their dreams in some way or another. And since that's my background, especially by providing them with opportunities for education, higher education. Okay. That's the secret for success. Well, I, you know, I think, again, uh, even though I'm many years older than a lot of the immigrants here, uh, the experiences when I was an immigrant are not that different. I mean, we, are, we share that experience, and for many Americans, that experience goes back two or three generations. And they talk with great pride about their relatives. Well, let them remember that you were there too. And uh, you know, show kindness 
show caring and be supportive. Appreciate the, the, the richness that, that immigrants bring to the United States. Uh, those are, the, are around my thoughts. And then, again, reinforcing the notion of the secret to not just survival but success in Minnesota and the United States is education. And I think many immigrants know that. And the more education they get, the better their chances. And, you know, it's a little bit hard to imagine that um, we were welcomed to the United States. Took, we took a troop transport ship over, American troop transport ship, and uh, arrived in, in uh, well, I guess, in New York Harbor. And the captain had all of us get, come out from the, you know, uh, the ship. I was with the men because I was almost nine years old. And we came on deck and he told, gave us a lecture about the Statue of Liberty. Well, it was a very nice lecture, I'm sure, but very few people spoke English. But the intent was there. The intent was to have us understand that this was something special. And then, you know, we uh, took, a, took a train into uh, Tressertown, which is in central P Pennsylvania. And that's where I learned English. I l lived in a residence hall. Most of my, the other kids were wards of the court, or they were orphans. It was an orphanage, Tressertown. Uh, but I learned English. I also taught a little bit of German. This is a side story, uh, yeah. And we would, uh, the, as kids would do in a dormitory like that, we'd sit at the f foot of the beds at night after the uh, house mother had gone to sleep, and we would just talk a lot. And they, uh, uh, they wanted me to teach them German, but they wanted only to, to learn a specific kind of German, which was bad words. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, I earned my first money, maybe a nickel or so for an evening, uh, teaching uh, these American kids in the home bad words so they can talk about their teachers and to their teachers saying those bad words. And I, I won't repeat them here. Yeah, but, but it helps, you know, being, in, being in, a, in a dorm. You have no choice. And when I went to the two-room schoolhouse in third grade, the fourth graders took me to the cl coat closet and I read Dick and Jane books. Mm -hmm. I learned English from fourth graders because there were only two teachers in the whole school. So. <laughs>